I'm delighted to say that thanks to the support of Music Magpie, who you know buy and sell things, more details in just a second, here's part two of the interview that I did with Doug Hurley, Colonel Doug Hurley, the pilot of Dragon, and also twice on the shuttle that recently went up, of course, to the space station. But more importantly for this video, why is he a Manchester City fan? But first... Huge thank you to Music Magpie for their support of this video. But of course, if you want to sell your DVDs, CDs, tech, phones, even Lego, give them a shout. Our son was born in 2010. And it, the, the Premier League, even at that time, is shown very early in the morning in the United States. And I just remember watching city play one time you know we're up in the morning or i was up in the morning with him very early and and it was you know vincent company and david silva and sergio aguero and 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 it was funny jack our son kind of latched on to the to the sky blue color and and i latched on to the players because you could just tell vincent company was a special and david silva were special special players and of course that was Right after the uh, the the takeover, that was in 2008 or 2009, correct? And uh, so they were they were good, and so they were on more, and 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 then I got a feeling you could just sense the feeling that there was the established um, hierarchy of 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 the uh, you know the 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 Arsenal's and the Man Uniteds and the Liverpools and those teams. And then you just kind of felt like Man City was this newcomer that they were. And, and, and that's all I've always personally felt like I was always having to work against being kind of the, the guy who, uh, you know, had to work hard to get to get to where I wanted to get. And, and it just kind of, I think all those things kind of fit. And of course, when the, the Aguero goal, I, I mean, the, I don't know if you'll ever, ever, ever see something like that in, let alone football, but it, world sport in general. I, you cannot. You could show that uh, they, they uh, NBC Sports put together a, a documentary about that, and I'm sure you've seen it. Um, I, I, they at least showed it. I don't know if they were the ones that put it together, but just all the different commentators, like John Champion, and you know that it's 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 moment by moment of that game. And, and it is just, I could watch that a hundred times and, and, and it's still the emotional effect that it has on you. I, I can't imagine what it would have been like to actually be there during that, that moment when City finally wins their championship after so many years. And, and, and it was just, I, I don't know, it just, so for me that all of that, it's like, how could you not follow this team? And, and, and then, and then you get totally invested and, and to the point where, you know, I, I was never somebody, I, I loved to play sports, but it was not necessarily something for me to watch sports uh, as a spectator necessarily. But this just, it, it's, I, I was hooked from then and it, it's now been 10 years later and nothing has changed. So I think I'm, uh, I'm in it for the duration now. And, uh, and then once, Jack and I came over to England the first time, which I think was three or four years ago. When you see a match in person, I, 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 there, uh, there's never been a sporting event. And I've been to car racing. I've been to Major League Baseball. I've been to a Super Bowl, uh, an American football Super Bowl back in the 90s. And I have never seen an environment, uh, a sports environment that just is – it, it's it's indescribable to 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 try to explain it to American spectators to what it's like at a at a at a football game uh, over in England and and just for two hours it's just this this chanting and singing and cheering and booing and all the I mean it just doesn't stop for two hours and uh, I, anyway I certainly by the time we came over for our first match that I. You know, unfortunately, we were hoping we had planned to come over in March. Uh, and I think it was just at the beginning of the coronavirus. Uh, in fact, City had canceled their match on it was on a Wednesday in early March with Arsenal. And 
we were supposed to go to the match on Saturday, I believe, and then stay for the Real Madrid Champions League uh, match that next week. And unfortunately, it just kind of all fell apart at the last minute. But uh, I'm so hoping something changes, you know, so maybe we can get back over, uh, you know, sometime next spring. But, you know, it, we'll just have to take it day by day. But yeah, I'm totally hooked now, and and I'm not sure if there's another <laughs> another sport I could go watch uh, uh, other than coming to see Man City play. As someone who obviously lived through the Aguero goal, I was commentating the ball by ball commentator on the BBC. And, oh no, uh, kidding! And the, the story which I'll I've told before, you know, is that I was commentating. I had next to me an ex player who was getting very excited. I'm trying to, as well as be a fan, be professional. You know that <laughs> as, a, as an astronaut, you know what it's like. You uh, bet. I, and I was trying to control my emotions and the guy next to me goes crazy. And as a result, we go off air. Uh, all the equipment falls to the ground, all the wires come out. Can you imagine that? Um, on the way up to the space station or something. And I'm actually <laughs> plugging all the things back in again and thinking, oh, this is the worst thing that could happen. I managed to get us back on air again. Um, I described the action to the, to the final whistle. I then went on the pitch. I interviewed all the players just after they'd won the trophy. And Vincent Company actually gave me his captain's armband from that day uh, as a souvenir. Wow. So you, I don't think you can really beat that. So those are the moments that stick with me. Um, I'm intrigued to know what was your experience? Were you watching that game live with your son? Um, we, can you remember you know, what it felt like at that time as a relatively new fan? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, watching it, you know, live here, um, because certainly you know this, but one thing that's very neat to see is all the games on the last, that 38th week, that 38th game, were all started and started at the same time. And it just, yeah, it was, I, I came out of my skin. I mean, I literally came out of my skin. It, it was just I never had a sporting event affect me like that. And, 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 you know, certainly at that point I was a, by any definition, a very, very new fan of the club. And, 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 you know, and he of course was just a, you know, he was a baby essentially at that point, but uh, unbelievable. And you just sit there and you go, it cannot possibly, I, I mean, even when, even when Jekyll got the header and scored the tie goal, you're thinking, no way, no way. And, and you know, cause you're well into stoppage time, you know, that was 90 right before 92 minutes, give or take, if I remember correctly. And, and, and just to, yeah, I, I mean, it, to me, it, it affected me so profoundly. And I, I certainly, you know, everybody said, well, it's just a game kind of thing. And it's, it's yeah, but it's just, you just can't imagine. And I, that the history of the club coming back and just the way they want it. And the fact that it was Manchester United and all those things, you know, just unbelievable, unbelievable. I remember giving a tour um, at Johnson space center. It was for one of the center directors, uh, former center director who had family that uh, is from England, from Manchester, and is, I, I don't know what they do, but they certainly are tied to Manchester United. And I was giving a tour to them and we were talking about it because they were in town for, I don't know if you remember, you, certainly you remember it, but uh, City played United here in Houston a few years ago during the ICC. And of course, I absolutely was going to that match. Uh, unfortunately, City, City, City's uh, 11 that started were not probably, I mean, uh, Marino started basically the the first teamers. Uh, and so it was a little bit of a challenging match for City, but it was fun to go to and incredible to be a part of the first derby that was not in uh, Manchester. But anyway, they were talking about, um, they were talking about, you know, they asked me, you know, about who's your favorite football team? And I said, well, City, of course, kind of thing. <laughs> and they're like, why? And I'm like, noisy neighbors. You know, Aguero, I mean, 93-20, I, I mean, how could you not? And, and you know, certain, certainly I, I miss all the subtleties because I am not a lifelong, you know, I didn't grow up in Manchester and I, you know, that I know there's a huge history with Manchester United as well, obviously. And, uh, but it just, they, it was just, they were pretty incredulous that I was a City fan, but I'm like, 
once you see something like that and once you experience something like that, even though it's on TV, I, I, how can you not? It's just, you, you couldn't, Holly, if Hollywood had written a movie like that, no one would have bought it. <laughs> it True. was unbelievable. True. And it just, and it just, but it's so, uh, it, it was just such a huge, huge, huge moment for, I'm, I'm certain for the blue side of Manchester, as well as obviously for the club, but just, that was a turning point that, you know, we're, we're as good as anybody and, you know, we're here for the long term. And I, you know, and it was just nice to see that, you know, there's a, there's a top six now instead of maybe a top five or a top four, which is what I think people thought at that time. So anyway, it, it, it was neat, really neat. I've got to tell you my experience of that Houston game that you're talking about. I hope I've said it right. And is it Houston, Houston? Which is the correct Houston is how we say it. I think that's how I think that's correct. But uh, yeah, it, <laughs> we should it, know. <laughs> I've lived here for I've lived here for almost exactly twenty years now. So I've I, I've been saying it wrong if it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my experience is that I went out on that preseason, and my dream was to go to the space center to see Mission Control. So I went down there. I saw Mission Control. Um, and the very same day, later that evening, uh, I was with City fans uh, uh, um, sort of preparing for the game. So to fulfil that ambition and then to, to later in the same couple of days see the game in Houston, the first derby match, as you say, outside mm -hmm. of, uh, of England was, was quite something. Um, now, my own history of, of, of watching space flight means I'm equally intrigued as to your story, which we'll come to in a second. But the final okay. question for now that I want to ask you about City is that yeah. given that you know now a little bit more than you did do and you've been over to Manchester, um, have you got into the sort of connection with music, with Oasis, with, you know, if you came over now, I guess you'd be treated to a place in the tunnel club and, and looked after, but would Mary D's be something that would appeal to you to go in with all the fans? Well, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a bit different in COVID times, but it's part of the city experience, isn't it? It, it really is. And I think, uh, you know, maybe, you know, sometimes in life, it's just kind of, things work out the way they're supposed to. And, I, you know, for me, I was a huge Oasis fan and a huge Smiths fan. And I, and I never realized how much of the music scene, the world music scene is tied to Manchester and, 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 but, but was always a fan. And, and in fact, and then to be able to come over there and, and, you know, when when you were a fan of the Smiths in the, you know, eighties and nineties, and of course, Oasis, I remember it was, uh, their kind of big breakout was about the time I was uh, I was overseas in the Marine Corps uh, on probably my third or fourth overseas deployment. I think we were in Australia, if I'm not mistaken. And I remember Supersonic was huge at that time, and and just and so that's from 30 years ago, and only 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and 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 then to you know become such a a fan of the of the club and then to find out that the the Gallagher brothers are big fans as well and and huge fans huge you know they're statesmen of the club almost as almost as much as some of uh, the great players and, and and so yeah it is ironic and then of course the Smiths same thing you know they're you know just and and just the vibrancy of the music scene and the, and the cultural art scene and you, of course you don't realize it until you get over there and see it that it, that it is what it is. And, and so I think it was, it's so ironic and so unique. And, and in some ways I think just meant to be that, that we were supposed to be city fans because of, because of uh, maybe my, my musical tastes. I don't it's know just you well enough to know you've got that humor as well. Do you get the man humor, the Manchester humor, which is very <laughs> self deprecating. Yeah, I think, I think uh, uh, it's kind of how I grew up as well. And, and I think, yeah, I fit in pretty well. And you, yeah, I, you, you very much sense, especially that, that particular game we were talking about where it's like, oh, city's going to screw this up. We're going to, we're going to figure something out to not win it, you know, and uh, instead they figure out the, the most incredible once in a generational lifetime, potentially way to win a game is uh, instead. So I, 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 and, and that's the thing. And, and when you hear that, you're like, okay, what are they talking about? Because I've only known a city team that has been pretty competitive. Obviously I'm, I'm way late to the way late to the train, but you know, for the folks that have been fans for their entire lives, uh, 
you know, going to exactly. And I mean, you know, it's like, you know, 20 years, 30 years of your life where, you know, they're somewhere between relegation or in the bottom, you know, the bottom three to the bottom 10. And, uh, and so I think you just, you know, it's a bonding part as well, you know, and I think you see that with, um, I can relate to some degree with either teams or uh, crews I've been on or a squadron I've been a part of you, you they sometimes take on that mentality because uh, it just makes it easier to get through those situations and those stressors and, and things like that and I mean even in space there's a lot of pressure on you to perform but I think if you don't take yourself too seriously that's way better and you get through it easier uh, than than if you take yourself so seriously that I think you end up making more mistakes and cause more problems anyway. And I think as a fan, if you took it so, so seriously, it would drive you crazy because I mean, sports is sports. Uh, and you know, city fans experienced it this year for sure. It's like, could, could we have won a third premier league championship in a row? Absolutely. Absolutely. But sometimes it just doesn't happen. You know, it's just, there's so much that has to go right. And, Sometimes it doesn't. And then, of course, with football injuries, key player injuries, um, and then not having Vinny, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm partial to, to Vinny. I, 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 we could have maybe used him for another season, even as a bit player. But uh, I know he, he's got uh, – and I'm kind of in a similar boat. It's like, you know, kind of looking to what, what is next in your life and your career and what you want to do and, you know, going back home, that kind of thing. And you can certainly understand that. But uh, – Anyway, yeah, unbelievable. I was lucky enough to spend some time with Vincent Company uh, last summer and wrote the book. Oh, I know. Uh, I know for the uh, book. I need to read it. Yeah, you need to. Get, I'll send you a copy over. You send me a picture <laughs> of you signed. I'll send you a copy of the book over. <laughs> I think that's a fair deal. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, the, the reason why you are so well known to everybody now is your, your career as an astronaut. Um, you flew on two um, shuttles. Uh, not least being the very last flight of the shuttle Atlantis, which I've been lucky enough to go and see Atlantis now in, in uh, uh, the Kennedy Space Center. Wow, what, a, what a, a, an aircraft that is. Um, yeah. Just tell me what, it, I mean, this is such an obvious cliched question to ask, but what else do you ask? You know, what is it like to fly in the shuttle? What does it feel like? To, I've gone in the simulator, but what does it feel like mm -hmm. to take off? And, and as a professional, you know, are you scared when, when, you, when yeah. you're getting that thing? And thanks to the fantastic support of Music Magpie, you'll hear the answer to that question and much more from Colonel Doug Hurley, a real hero, a NASA astronaut, but more importantly, a Manchester City fan. Thanks once again to Music Magpie for their support, without which I wouldn't be able to bring you this video. So thank you to them. Uh, and obviously thanks to Colonel Doug Hurley and there'll be another video to come soon. Once again, big thanks to Music Magpie for their support. And remember, they've helped me, so why don't you go to them?